everyone, welcome to a Six Minutes of Witchcraft with me, Laura Tempest Sackroff. Today I'm going to be answering a viewer email. First, I'm going to set that timer for six minutes. And next, I'm going to pull up that email. So this email is from Kendra. And she says, uh, hey Tempest, I've got a six minute of witchcraft video request. Luckily, here we are. I'd love to hear you do a wee ramble about people who tell you things should be done a certain way. Example, we were doing a candle thing and I told someone they could blow theirs out to take it with them. Some other guy said you had to use a snuffer and then gave a reason I didn't hear. I've met people who put out their candles different ways and nothing bad has happened yet. I tend to be wary of those who are absolutes in the craft. What are your thoughts on the subject and are there any rules that are actually worth merit to you? Thanks so much. Thanks Kendra, thank you so much for sending that in. So, like you, I also do not believe that there are any absolutes in the craft, except for the one absolute that there are no absolutes in the craft. Uh, yeah, I'm smart ass about that. Uh, so, there's a few ways of looking about this. One is that tradition. Tradition might dictate that something is done in a certain way. So, when you join a particular coven that might be, say, Gardnerian or a particular kind of a family Italian, um, a Greek, whatever the group is, typically there are different protocols that are passed down. How you cast the circle, how a uh, god or spirit is invoked, uh, how anything is handled. And when you are practicing that tradition, there's a lot of should. You should do those things that way because that's how tradition can be carried on. It doesn't mean that that's how you have to do all your things, but when you're working within that specific tradition, it's a good way. And if it is really a tradition that has been handed down for a long time, things tend to have developed to be done a certain way because there is a logical reason for them. Uh, that it worked, right? Um, that it was divine through a spirit, through a goddess, something like that, uh, UPG, whatever it was, this is how it was decided how it is. And so if you're going to say that you practice that particular tradition, you should probably do it that way, at least in that specific context. However, here's an interesting thing about the human brain. And uh, my friend Misha and Megan and I were talking about this a little while ago which is that we love to solve problems, but we often solve the problem, whatever is the most immediate solution. This worked, that's the solution. That doesn't mean it's the best or only solution. Our brain says, you're, you've got a cookie. Why could you want more? Stop, stop, why your head? You're comfortable, worry about the next thing. Uh, it's just part of our, how our brains work. It's a good survival instinct, but it doesn't mean that we're necessarily solving problems in the best way possible. So if you think about this on a global scale of say lighting candles, right? And how to put them out. There are many different ways of approaching it because people have found different solutions and have passed those on. So for the folks who believe in a snuffer who had a snuffer, a specific tool, right? You're gonna use a little walnut shell. Poop. <laughs> I guess you could. That seems. Uh, anyway. We're not gonna go off on a tangent. We only have six minutes. So there's there's that. There's the idea that you could pinch it out with your fingers. There's a you say you should you know lick your fingers first. There are some that say you should breathe through that, and as you you know your breath blows it out, you are still kind of absorbing some of the energy, and it's kissing it or blowing it off. Uh, then there are people who say, if you blow the candle out, you're blowing away the magic. I have thoughts about that. If magic starts with you and your thought, are you really blowing it away? We blow candles out, right, to um, birthday cakes. You make a wish, right? Is that blowing out? So this is just an example. Like since, since Kendra used the candle example, I just wanted to give you a few ways of looking at that. So there are ways to blow candles out that have a least amount of smoke, the least amount of wax splatter. Uh, those are important things. Like if you don't want to set off a fire detector, being able to quench that fire quickly 
all right, and perhaps save the wick in a well, you know, in a good way. That's one way of doing it. If you don't want to get wax all over the place, snuffing it is great. So there are some very practical reasons for doing it, but that doesn't mean that they're the only way or that you're necessarily offending or diminishing the magic in that. So does it work? How effective it is, is the, the method that you're using? How does it make you feel? What are the results? This is really, witchcraft is a wonderful science experiment. Like you're always experimenting, right? You're experiencing, you're trying things out, you're following in your, your intuition. Hopefully it's right. Otherwise you find out it's not. And so what rules are there? I think it comes down to if you want to follow a certain path, you probably want to do it a certain way. If you are inspired to try something else, then that's fine as long as you notice that you don't spill wax all over the place or that you don't set off your fire detector. Uh, in other terms of rules of magic, I've talked about this a few times, you know, magic follows the path of least resistance, so being specific, but not too specific. Oh, there's our six minutes. Stop. And my, I talked about an earlier version of the, uh, the threefold law, which should be more about how does something that you do affect you, mind, body, and spirit, past, present, and future, not in a sense of karma, which really doesn't have much place in witchcraft. And um, so really, what are the rules out there? It's how you conduct yourself. It's the best way of looking at it. Uh, if you if you know yourself, you know, understanding the best and worst parts of yourself when you're doing a working, that's important. Are you maintain, maintaining balance, which means are you causing action to happen? Are you trying to settle something? And are you taking responsibility? That's it. Those are my main guidelines for any kind of working and how you get to that and how do you achieve a sort of nexus between those three points is up to you. So if somebody tells you that you're doing it wrong and they don't offer a solution or a suggestion of why, I would say generally ignore that. Uh, and you can listen to their suggestion because you might go, oh, wow, I've been doing it this way. It's worked. Magic has worked, but I have wax all over my class. Then you might want to switch to a stuffer. So cause and effect, practice, experience. Uh, those are the things to live by. So again, Kendra, thank you so much for sending your question in. I hope that helps. And if anybody else has questions, you can always post them in the comments below. And uh, you can send them to my email via lauratempestzacroft.com. There's a little contact form there um, via Facebook page, anything else like that. But, and so I'm gonna wrap that up. And I hope you all are doing awesome and I'll be filming more of this soon. Take care, bye.